This is your host, Sapna Bhartia, and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. And today we have two guests from Oracle, George Saab, VP of Development at Java, and Manish Gupta, VP of Marketing for Java. Manish, George, it's great to have you both on the show. Thanks. Great to be here. Good to be here, Sapna. And of course, today we are going to talk about Java 18. But before we go there, I would like to hear from both of you, how have you seen the adoption and embrace of Java in this cloud-centric, cloud-native world? Java is something that people have uh, liked and trusted for years for their server-side applications. And you know, as people have effectively move from the data center to the cloud, um, Java has been right there for them and has been you know, something that's been useful and helpful. In fact, it's been so natural and obvious that people just don't make a big deal about it, right? The uh, you know, journalists don't get, get a lot of clicks for telling people uh, what's obvious, and what's obvious is that you know, Java is the tool that people want um, when they're running something on the back end. Yeah, um, one of the things I'll, uh, I'll refer to is a study we recently concluded with a, a third-party partner. Uh, they looked at 14 different trends that included all of the things that we you know, monitor closely and, and talk about, including microservices, big data, analytics, uh, CICD, uh, cloud native development, uh, all of those things. And so in these 14 trends, Java was number one in majority of those trends. And in some cases, number two as a development platform in a language. So that's just you know, one dimension to answer questions, Sapran, on what is the attraction towards Java? What is Java looking like as we think about the future trends? So it's right at the top, just like George said, you know, for, for the past 26 years, it has been and it continues to be. Yeah, I was going to say, I think another interesting thing that we see happening um, is, you know, over the years, um, as Java has remained popular, um, there's always been sort of a question of, you know, what is going to be the next thing? What's going to replace Java? And uh, you know, the the uh, rumors of Java's death have, uh, you know, often been greatly exaggerated, uh, as, as they say. Um, and in, in fact, you know, what we're seeing is a new generation of developers um, who sort of grew up thinking that Java was, you know, something old and outmoded, discovering that, in fact, you know, Java solves a lot of the things that they find problematic with whatever they tried first. And so we're seeing, you know, both people coming back to Java, people who have stayed with it all along, but also a new generation of developers who are discovering Java for the first time uh, and, and are really happy with, with what they see as we've been continuing to modernize and, and evolve Java. One more thing that we are seeing is evolution of edge. And we are talking a lot about edge computing. It depends on who you talk to. It could be uh, IoT devices or it could be a resource constrained environment, which is a data center at the edge near users or near applications. Can you talk about what role do you think Java can play there? So I, I think Java can play a great role there. I think it's, in fact, sort of an, uh, an undertold story, um, the extent to which people are using Java um, in devices. Um, for our subscription, we have a lot of people who are using Java on the desktop. Um, it's obviously popular um, in embedded devices as well. Um, and one of the things also that isn't talked about, but is a place where Java is used frequently in a little bit of a different form factor, um, is Java Card. Um, this is something that is extremely popular. There are billions of Java cards out there. You probably have you know, seven or eight of them um, actually on or around your body right now without even realizing it. Um, so uh, you know, I, I, I think Java has a great future there. Um, and it is something that we continue to be interested in and are investing in in order to make sure that, you know, it's not just the sort of, you know, big metal back end, um, you know, future, but also places where uh, Java can be used for uh, other other kinds of applications as well. You know, the, so there are something like 56 billion JVMs out there and about 60, between 60 and 65 percent of those are cloud based. And cloud-based meaning they're either sitting in, in, in you know, data centers and large data centers and public clouds, or they are actually running in these IoT devices at the edge. So Java is already quite prevalent in, in these edge environments. And if you truly take it to what George referred to on the Java card side, uh, then it gets into you know, billions and billions of devices leveraging the Java technology today. Another hot emerging technology is EV or electric vehicles. Do you see any potential use of Java in the EV space? 
Yeah, so um, over the years, there have been a number of car manufacturers who have been using Java for uh, different things. And, you know, that can, uh, is not always just in the operation of the car. It can also be in things like the uh, in entertainment systems, et cetera. Um, you know, because of the relationship with those customers, I, I can't speak about anyone specifically, um, but I can say that um, you, you, you would probably be surprised um, at uh, the, the places where it's already being used today um, and is part of people's plans going forward. We, we track about 23 industries and automotive industry is one of those. Uh, Java has prevalence both uh, in the commercial terms as we track our subscription customers uh, but if you expand it even further, just utilization of Java as a technology across multiple use cases within an electric vehicle um, environment is, uh, is, has been going on for, for several years. So yes, the answer is, short answer is yes, absolutely. So let's talk about uh, 18, what's new there? Yeah, so Java 18 is the latest uh, six month release. It's coming out uh, uh, March 22nd. Um, and uh, it is continuing to predictably deliver um, these time-based releases, which have a smaller increment of, uh, of evolution. Um, there are quite a number of uh, features that are in there, um, both uh, in improving the core libraries, um, in improving the uh, interaction with native code, um, as well as making improvements to the Java language that make it uh, even more of a pleasure for developers to use. Anything else that's exciting in this release? Sure. So I think one of the things that developers are going to, are going to be excited to see is um, a preview of the um, pattern matching for switch, um, switch statements being able to do pattern matching, um, as well as um, updates to the uh, vector API and foreign function um, API. Uh, these are probably things that are more interesting to people who are writing uh, libraries um, that run on Java um, uh, that ultimately will result in uh, a better experience for, uh, for application developers. One other thing that I would add is there's also um, a feature which is a simple web server. Um, which is included. That's great for developers who are just getting started, um, don't want to have to do a, work, a lot of work in order to figure out what's going on, but can just um, kick it off, get it going. It's not a web server that's intended to be something that is for production use. It really is more for uh, educational use. So for students and for, um, uh, for educators, um, it's just a great facility to have that there and able to, uh, to set up without, um, without any work. What kind of new or potential use cases you see for Java in the emerging technology space? Of course, we have talked about Edge and EV. Anything else where you see some scope for Java? You know, we don't think of these releases as driving a particular use case. We think of releases as part of a continuum. Given the fact this is every six months, you can expect a new release just like clockwork. And then ever since we had Java 10, it's been, you know, as promised every six months. Uh, Java, as you just indicated, you know, we cover all use cases. Uh, you can think of Java as supporting that. Uh, so 18 is not necessarily targeted at a use case or a particular industry. It's an evolution bringing in new capabilities, whether it's new features or performance or stability enhancements. And it's just an ongoing stream of innovation that comes out every six months. So there is no specific narrow answer. It is a very broad answer. And I think we will probably repeat that every six months because that's the approach we have taken. With the ongoing geopolitical you know, situation is changing, security is becoming a serious concern. From Java's perspective, how, how do you look at security? How are you worried about it? And then you know these new releases, how they're making it secure so folks don't have to worry about it. Yeah, this has been an ongoing area of focus for us for many years. Um, in fact, uh, as you know, um, compatibility is one of the things that's always been important for Java. Um, uh, just about the only thing where we will break compatibility um, is if there's a concern about keeping people secure. So that is our number one thing that we focus on. Um, and I think we have a, a, a number of ways that we approach this. So the, the sort of simplest and most obvious one um, is our long-term support releases, which basically give people a stream of fixes for security, stability, and performance, um, again, with security being the main thing. Um, we update those releases uh, four times a year. Um, on regular dates that are known. So basically there's, there's a constant stream of, of uh, security fixes. And those are both things where uh, issues have been reported to us. 
There are places where we have, you know, proactively gone out and, and done uh, testing to, to find new things that should be fixed or addressed. Um, and some of those are even things that are called, you know, defense in depth. So it's not necessarily something that is immediately exploitable, but it's something where we're basically just making sure that there's sort of multiple layers of, of defense um, that, that are present. Um, every new feature that we make for Java, we think about how could there be a security aspect of this? Is there something that, you know, that we're adding in that, you know, gives people power? Well, can how could that power be misused? And I think this is a really important aspect, and it's something that I, I think people are becoming more aware of in our industry, um, that, you know, 10 or, 10 or 20 years ago, people thought more about, you know, how can I make this powerful? Um, but I, and, and the first thing that, you know, came to mind with quality was just, well, how could I break it? Well, so when it comes to security, it's sort of like quality, but with a different hat on, right? You're thinking of, you know, how could it be broken in a way that could be exploited and, and harm people or, or, you know, reveal information. Um, so this is, is something that, you know, at multiple stages through the development of every feature we add to Java, we think through that. Um, we think through, first of all, what are the areas where it could be exploited? We think about how are we going to test to understand, you know, whether that has happened or is possible. Um, and then finally, make sure that we're adding in those tests that we then run, you know, on a regular basis with every release we do to ensure that, you know, something hasn't inadvertently crept in. I'll, I'll just add that uh, in addition to this quarterly patch updates that we provide, uh, there are instances where we provide interim updates to the customers um, as and when we deem necessary. And, and then a very important part of the value that Oracle brings to the customers is its partnership. And, and, and I'm not kind of, uh, uh, you know, meaning in a software way, but the depth and breadth of experience that the development engineers and the support engineers have, both reporting to George, uh, is unparalleled, right? Each support engineer has 15 plus years of experience sitting in the same organization where the development occurs. So they have seen the problems before. They have seen the challenges that have occurred in the security side. And so whenever we see some major uh, issues that erupt in the marketplace, uh, we are there to help our customers work through it. Um, and uh, we have seen uh, when these challenges happen, the web traffic goes up, the calls into the support team goes up, and, uh, and, and that partnership becomes much more meaningful in those environments and those circumstances. And, and that's what we are here to help our customers with. It's true that you folks and the community does a great job with patches and update, but it's up to the users and customers to actually install them. Plus, when we look at cloud, where there are thousands of Java machines running, it can be a huge challenge to keep a track of those machines, keep them updating and manage and maintain them. So can you talk about how Java management service kind of eases that pain for users? Sure, I can take that. Uh, so. You know, you bring up a very important element of uh, what we're trying to do is, you know, we know that our customers face complexity. They're running hundreds, sometimes thousands of Java applications. What they have in their environment sometimes is not even available to them on a single dashboard. So the, the, the context for pulling Java management service was to offer that single pane of glass. It's a native OCI service that gives visibility to our customers on their deployments on-prem, or in the clouds or running in hybrid mode, right? And so they get visibility into what's working, what's running, what versions are running, where are they running? And that's the first step. The second component of that is having some insights uh, where giving them sort of a perspective on the gaps, perhaps on the security front, perhaps on the governance front, or perhaps on performance uh, tuning options that might exist. And then the roadmap for Java management service has many capabilities that we intend to bring into the marketplace over time. And that value proposition will just continue to, to grow. It is about helping them manage the complexity, giving them better visibility, and then giving them the autonomy to get better in performance, improve security, and to automatically tune their environments as appropriate for, the, for, for their businesses. So those are the values that we expect Java Management Service to continue to grow over time. Uh, we are, we're getting some fantastic response from those that have tried the service and, uh, and are finding the ease of use, the experience to be good, uh, but we're constantly evolving that service to build value on it. 
there is one big news for the Java community, and I am also excited about that. So tell us about it. Yes, yeah, Sopranil, a very exciting announcement. Uh, we are bringing back Java One, uh, everybody's favorite conference. Uh, you know, thousands of attendees have uh, enjoyed participating and uh, joining in person. Uh, we hope we can uh, build that excitement back. Uh, so this will be October 16th to the 20th in Las Vegas in conjunction with Oracle Cloud World. Uh, running as an independent event, uh, targeted squarely at the Java developers and, and the ecosystem that Java serves. So very excited to, to bring that back. Yeah, this is unique in the industry because uh, this is the, the Java conference you can go to where you can meet uh, the people who have designed and developed Java. How different is it going to be from Code 1 conference? I think the primary distinction is the focus on the Java platform and the ecosystem around Java. Um, the construct is still, it is for developers by developers. So lots of hands-on labs, uh, training sessions, uh, and, and all of the elements you can think about all the way from the development uh, platform to frameworks, to applications, innovative use cases that have benefited and leveraged Java platform. All of those will be showcased uh, very much about developers served by developers. Manish, Georges, thank you so much for taking time out today and I look forward to our next conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Sopna. Thank you so much.